things that I, I've um, always loved, and I wish I wish we were to create this technology uh, for our summer vacation over the holidays for uh, our kids' graduation. We took Spencer and Madison to Europe, and um, and, and my job was was to take pictures of the kids and and, and to document all of this. And when we come back, uh, we're going to create a, a photo album, and that would be our graduation present for the two of them. And, um, and how they, they spent the last summer with their parents. And so everywhere I went, I was taking pictures. And of course, we're, we're going through Europe and, and, um, uh, and we're visiting all these great places. But when we're visiting all these great places, it's during daylight. And when you're outside during daylight, the dynamic range of your, of your phone, which has become my most important camera, simply isn't enough to be able to deal with that. And what, what, was, what was frustrating to me, and I kept sending emails back to the engineers, that, gosh, we've got to make HDR faster, we've got to make HDR faster, we've got to make HDR so fast that I can always use it as my camera. And the reason for that is because in life, you only get one shot. You only get one shot. There are so many experiences where we only get one shot. And because our camera is now our most, our phone is now our most important camera, the ability to capture that magical moment comes and goes. HDR today, our cameras today, really needs to be improved. And let me illustrate that. So this is, uh, this is V, this is one of our employees, and she's standing in front of a tinted window just to give her, give, make it even possible to take a picture of uh, her standing against a bright sunlight. She's standing against a tinted window, and um, obviously you, you look, she's perfect, she looks beautiful, and she's uh, uh, well taken. It's a nice camera. This is the iPhone 5. Um, however, you can't really tell what the outside is. It's completely washed out. It's washed out because the dynamic range of our camera, the iPhone 5, doesn't allow us to both capture her fidelity in the dark and the bloom outside, the, the extremely high, um, the bright sunlight outside. And so you can solve this problem by focusing on the outside. And this is what you get. Now you realize that you're in Las Vegas, but unfortunately, B has disappeared. And thankfully, there's a great new technology. This great new technology is called HDR. HDR works on most of the super phones today. They all have some kind of capabilities around HDR. And with an HDR shot, this is what you get. Quite frankly, it's a nice camera. It's a nice photograph. It's a nice photograph. She's very beautiful. She's standing in front of the palms, and, um, and everybody knows that she is enjoying a trip to Vegas. Now, she goes outside, and, um, and she's standing out in the middle of the sun, and as you can see, all of a sudden, everybody behind her is washed out. Still a very nice picture. The sky's gone, the building's gone, and, uh, and, and apparently uh, some alien is walking uh, just, just behind her. And so, so uh, uh, the, her, her, uh, her, her boyfriend uh, says, uh, well, I, I have the technology for that. I have the technology for that. That technology, I'm a photo enthusiast. I know my stuff. I understand high dynamic range. I'm going to turn on HDR. Well, this is what you get on an iPhone 5. Well, the reason for that, the reason for that, now you see the background. Now you see the background. But because the camera took two shots, and because the, the, there's movement in the back, right. it's very difficult for the camera, the image processing technology software, to now realign and figure out what's the best way to put the picture back together. Today's camera works like this. It's a sensor. It goes into an image signal processor, which takes the, what is called the Bayer patterns and turns it into RGB in the process. It enhances the image quality, extracts the lumens, extracts the chroma, and reconstructs what looks like to you a JPEG image. That JPEG image is stored into system memory, after which the CPU can come back and do some wonderful magic with it, such as HDR. What NVIDIA's Tegra 4 architecture does is something radically different. Something radically different. We introduced a brand new way of designing our chip so that we could put our processors closer to the imaging pipeline. The first thing that you see, let me just go back, this is old, this is new. 
The first thing that you notice is that we take two shots at once. We take two shots at once. One shot with high exposure, one shot with light exposure. Then the first thing that we do is we dump it into this computational photography engine sitting in system memory. And once we do that, this engine could, allow, could now take advantage of all of the processors on chip. That's why we have 72 cores. That's why we have four 815s. That's why we have this powerful ISP. And with this computational photography engine, we could do the necessary mathematics so quickly that effectively at the end of the shot, you have HDR. Let me illustrate. If you look at it today, there's me standing in front of the palm, takes the first picture, goes through the sensor, goes through the ISP, goes into memory, changes the exposure, that's what the HDR software does, changes the exposure, goes through the sensor, goes through the image pro ISP, goes into memory. Then the CPU fetches both of those images back out of system memory and does registration, does necessary warping, basically is taking two images, trying to align them pixel by pixel, obviously very, very hard, your hand's shaking if the, op if the subjects are moving, but nonetheless, it does its best possible job to register, to align, to warp everything so that it fits nicely together, and then it has to take this very, very large dynamic range effective photograph and retone map it down into something that can fit within one photograph's dynamic range. Okay. All of that mathematics takes time. In the case of the iPhone 5, it takes about two seconds. It takes about two seconds. And that's why if you're standing perfectly still, you take a great photo. If you're moving around, it's a problem. Two seconds is a very long time. Well, the way that Tegra 4 does it is we go bam, bam. We take two shots, two simultaneous shots. And then all processors are deployed and running to do the alignment, the warping, the registration, the tone mapping, all of the necessary image processing, and boom, it goes out one single photo. It basically is a one-shot HDR. As a result, whatever photograph you can take, whatever photograph you can take with a one-shot camera with one exposure, you can now take in HDR. Whatever you could take with one exposure, you can now take in HDR. And if you think about this architecture, imagine what, what else you could do with that. But before we do that, let's um, let's uh, let's demonstrate. Let's demonstrate.